The iPhone 11 Pro looks absolutely stunning on paper with its new spec sheets, but the main feature this year around is its professional camera setup. On the back we have a triple camera setup all at 12 megapixels, a main sensor with an aperture of f1.8 and optical image stabilization, a telephoto sensor with 2 times optical zoom and optical image stabilization, and an ultra wide sensor with an aperture of f2.4 and 120 degree field of view. We also have a selfie cam in the front with, an, with a 12 megapixel cam as well with an aperture of f2.2 and electronic image stabilization. All seems great so let's go ahead and test it out and without further ado let's go! So guys, we're going to start off here with some day pictures. Now at first I'm just going to show you the three cameras as we go one by one. So keep an eye out on the bottom left hand corner. We're going to start with main at one time zoom. So no zoom here. Ultra wide, which is backed by 120 degree field of view. And then two times optical zoom using that telephoto lens. Bear in mind that these are all 12 megapixel sensors over here. So quality should be pretty similar. And also bear in mind that Apple have refreshed their originally great 12 megapixel main and telephoto sensor too slightly and that extra ultra wide sensor doesn't hurt at all. I think things look pretty good and pretty clear. I must say that I can't say that this is streaks ahead of the competition but it is definitely up there with the top dogs and when looking at detail with the telephoto shots I must say it is a lot better than most Android phones out there. Though I think the ultra with the ultra wide sensor they do have a lot of work to do but with that main sensor shot things look stunning. The thing that I like about Apple pictures well iPhone pictures pictures is the fact that they do not oversaturate any coloring. It honestly looked just like this as I was there and yes using a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus would have made this place that I was at which is actually Gubai Watertown at top north of Beijing look a lot more colorful and a lot more poppy but this still looks absolutely stunning especially when checking this bicycle archer with the blue against that grayish wall background. Taking a look at a whole bunch of colors here you guys can see the natural color segments actually coming through and it really does show things look absolutely superb and the only sensor that we truly do lose a lot of detail on is that ultra wide sensor though that is the case with most cell phones out there it seems to lose a lot more detail with the new iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max as opposed to other Android phones who have been in the game with the ultra wide sensor for quite a while now as you guys can see that ultra wide sensor loses some shot over here but that telephoto lens actually picks up a lot of detail sometimes I feel that the telephoto lens actually picks up up a brighter shot as opposed to the main camera and definitely the ultra wide camera too. When we get to night shots you guys will see what I mean there. But taking a look at photos over here and now we're going to start going into more of a zoom here. So we have optical zoom with the telephoto. Now bear in mind that when we do go ahead and jump into higher zoom rates which we'll get to in a minute we are still going to be using the telephoto camera. So if you guys are using 1.5 times zoom or one uh, all the way up to 1.9 times zoom you'll actually be using using the regular 12 megapixel sensor. Though as soon as you go past that two megapixel, that two times zoom limit over there, you will be shifting into the telephoto lens for a greater detailed shot. So honestly, two times optical zoom looks a hell of a lot better than using the main camera at 1.9 times zoom. So keep that in mind when you guys do decide to zoom because anything between one and two times is not going to look that great. But we're gonna go over here and test out the zoom. So we're going from ultra wide here. Now we're gonna jump into that two times optical using the telephoto. Now we're going to go into three times. Now this is digital, but it still uses the telephoto camera, but it is digital since the limit on optical is indeed two times zoom. And going all the way to 10 times, the quality looks absolutely horrendous, guys. I've seen many digital zoomed shots on plenty Android phones that I've tested out, and even phones that cost a sixth of this price look better when you're hitting that 10 times zoom limit. But I must say the two times optical zoom looks absolutely fantastic, and I don't think many other phones out there can and beat it when it does that just absolutely perfectly but with that further zoom a lot of phones do a better job they also arguably do a better job with the regular day shots though I think the strongest point with the new iPhone 11 Pro Max is their new telephoto sensor and it really does show at two times the ultra wide sensor is a cool little feature and I do think like I said earlier they have work to do on it but it does get a 120 degree field of view and things look pretty great when we go into bokeh over here this is a natural shot that was not bokeh we used to two times optical zoom over here on this shot and two times portrait too. Remember when you do use portraits, it natively switches to two times telephoto over here because 
is the telephoto lens actually kind of acts as a depth sensor. So it gives more of a natural blur effect in the background. As you guys can see here with this line, as we go in, that background blur effect looks perfect and there is no edge detection whatsoever, but you can actually tap away from that two times, zoom when in portrait mode, and you get a shot of portrait mode using the main lens. So it does not use that telephoto lens anymore when you do tap the two times away and go back to one times optical zoom use, well, regular zoom, just one times shot using the main camera. So I think telephoto actually looks a lot better when you're trying to portrait a shot. As you guys can see over there, my mom's glasses on the right hand side were really badly edge detected over there using the regular one times portrait mode since we're using the main camera and not the depth effect sensor from the telephoto lens. Now taking a look at some indoor shots, I was doing the same over here with the main and the ultra wide and the zoom and things look really good indoors I must say without light hitting on the lens it actually does almost I would say a better job than outdoor scenarios you guys will see how much better it actually looks when we do go at night using iPhone's new updated night mode which is really cool but as taking a picture as for taking pictures indoors I must say I am pretty satisfied even with zooms and ultra wide it captures a lot of detail and a lot of phones don't get indoor rights and many cell phone companies don't really care much for indoor they just care for all that outdoor Door glory. Now looking at some indoor portraits over here, things look pretty great too. This is just one time using the, using the main lens. You guys can see some edge detection, but using this shot over here, look at the glass over there. There is definitely edge detection using one times. Now we do have the best thing about the new iPhones over here, and that is its video recording. I have never ever encountered such a stable video recorder on a phone in my entire life. Things look absolutely superb here, guys. They really do. And the cool thing is with full HD 60 frames per second, you can switch between between the main ultra wide and telephoto lens. Though they have not made the switch between them gradual at all, and you can easily see the jump between them. They do not do a good job when you flick between those sensors at all. But I, I must say things still look pretty decent when recording ultra wide at 60 frames per second and 4K 60 looks ridiculously great if you ask me guys. All the colors are perfect. Nothing is oversaturated whatsoever over here. And the stabilization you using that optical image sensor is really brilliant, except for the ultra wide, but things still seem pretty stable with ultra wide, even without the use of optical image stabilization. If you do gradually zoom though, it will be between each sensor. And I can't say that that will be the best. And over here, I am pretty much running down the slope here and things look pretty good. We don't have any super optimization over here as we see with GoPros, but we do have a sense of great stabilization. And we're gonna go ahead and check out the mic quality later on as well. So keep an eye out for that at the bottom right corner when we get into night mode since I'll be doing a test on the mic quality there as well. Now when it comes to slow motion over here guys, we are unfortunately limited to 240 FPS, but as Apple states, they wanted to keep things at full HD. It would be nice to see 480 FPS at full HD, but things still seem pretty slow and really clear at 240 FPS. Now ultra wide at night looks absolutely terrible guys. I'm going to show you the first couple pictures over here showing that ultra wide sensor from the main and it really does not do a good job. It doesn't show any justice whatsoever. I'm going to move on to night mode off and on over here and you guys cannot natively switch it yourselves but when you see the little icon pop up for auto night mode you can tap on it and you can turn it off using a slider and then you can slide it all the way up to get the maximum night mode on that you could possibly get. So keep an eye on the bottom left corner. I definitely show you night mode off and night mode on over there. And as you guys can see, this old school projector was absolutely awesome and things looked really great when that night mode was turned on. This shot absolutely amazed me. Look at the quality, not just brightening up the shot, but the detail in the shot looks superb. I can't say as much for when there is, is a lot of light in the sense already, such as this shot. It doesn't really tame those lights and there is still a lot of light noise when viewing a direct light there. But looking at the around scenarios, things look pretty great, but as soon as there is an active light in there, it doesn't do as great of a job as when you're just taking a picture of the dark. I've also noticed that a lot of the sky, uh, there's a bit of I, I could say granules around it kind of gives a little bit of a pixelization effect in the black sky when you're taking a picture using night mode but overall the textures that you see in buildings and structures look absolutely incredible i must say that i can't really say much for night mode as of right now but i'm sure after some software updates we'll be getting some great content with using that sky effect as you guys can see what i mean right over here now we do have night mode on telephoto but unfortunately it is lacking in the ultra wide 
apartments. Once again, it could possibly be refurbished using a software update, but using telephoto night mode off and on really doesn't look that great. Things definitely get brighter when using telephoto lens with night mode on, but I can't say as much for detail. As you guys will see over here, night mode off, and then jumping into night mode on over here, the detail doesn't improve at all, and the, sli the shot only gets slightly brighter if you ask me and you losing that pixel or ga gaining pixelization with the shot with night mode on using the telephoto is really not great hit is still over there and take a look at the sky which is what i mean you guys can clearly see the different color palettes and using that telephoto lens really makes the sky look seriously wonky over here this is on top of the great wall in that gubai water town that i was telling you guys about it was really stunning that night and i was really glad to have my iphone there with me to get to testing these night mode shots out but when we go into night mode on with a lot of light in the screen it looks terrible you lose all the detail i think it looks a lot better with night mode off in this scenario it just just does not know how to handle light but i'm sure that will improve with software updates like i mentioned now this is a slight dark situation over here it is the sun is down it's not fully dark yet and portrait looked pretty good now when we take video at night you guys can see that the pixelization is pretty terrible with a lot of light around i must say that things looked a lot better when there isn't too much light around with all the darkness if it's a very bright shot at night things look pretty great and we do get some flickering around that was not the light and things with main ultra wide and telephoto look pretty Pretty decent too if you ask me but that light flickering really did annoy me now at the top of the great wall over here things look pretty good with 4k 60 fps and 1080p 60 fps as well switching between the different modes that we have of main ultra wide and telephoto and we're going to go ahead and test out the mic quality too seeing this incredible fountain over here which you guys will see in a minute i managed to capture a lot of the sound Now moving on to the selfie department here guys, we do get a normal standard effect Then we actually have a wide mode. I wouldn't go as far as to say ultra wide, but it definitely widens out the shot a lot. When you do go into portrait mode, however, you cannot use that wide mode. So every time I switch over to portrait mode, you guys can see that it zooms things in. This is not zoomed in. This is actually just the standard pick that you see. So first we see the standard main pick, then the wide pick, you actually get like two little arrows pointing outwards. And then as soon as you switch over to portrait, you don't get that option, but you do get a great blurred effect. Over here in these little buildings over here that wide mode really makes a big difference seeing me as a person and with other members in my family around it really did do a great job though I did see some distortion on the edges of their faces there's definitely some distortion with edge detection when using the portrait mode in the front but we do have some really awesome modes and I actually think they look really fantastic so this is the 4k 60 frames per second video test on the iPhone 11 Pro Max I have never been treated to 4K 60 FPS with a selfie camera that is actually on the front of the phone. Let me know what you guys think of the video quality and the mic test. And just before I head off, take a look at this awesome view here in China. And here is the quality of the 1080p at 60 frames per second selfie cam footage here and the mic test once again. So let me know what you guys think of that as well as the stabilization of this clip. Let me know what you guys thought about the mic quality test using the front cams over there. I think it looked absolutely incredible when it came to stabilization and using 4K 60 frames per second for the first time in my life with a selfie cam was really a true blessing for me. It was absolutely awesome and perfect for those on the go vloggers out there. Taking nighttime selfies was not a treat at all. Actually using the selfie camera in any night situation was absolutely terrible. Whether it was pictures, portraits or using that wide format that we do get and video Video as well things do not look great using the selfie at night so steer clear of that if you guys are indeed going to pick up the new iPhone but overall the actual phone itself has been pretty awesome and treated me really well and the cameras really have been a step up for me as from previous iPhones and I do think that that is the true feature selling point this year overall I'm really impressed I can't say it takes the best pictures around but it is certainly top class when it comes to the video department and until next time guys this is Technic